You're? I'm, I'm Race Dog. And you are? Doc Dog. Doc Dog, of course. And we are here today for Daily Drivers. Yeah, this is the ultimate cool dad mobile. It's okay to have a sports car, but like, what's real life yeah. look like with a cool car? Right. We got some options. There are options. So let's Ger see. How Germany makes the best ones. We've kind of established that. So here we go. All right. Most people that think about a daily driver, especially a sports sedan, they think about something that's got four doors, a big engine. Germany's been doing this formula for years. The BMW M850 Grand Coupe is probably the best looking car that they have on sale today. But the reality is that most Americans are not coveting coupes anymore or Grand Coupes or sedans. They're looking for SUVs. They want something bigger. This is the XB7 Alpina. So the XB7 really is the best of all worlds. It's big, it's fast, it's cool looking. You can get big wheels on it. You can stick your kids in the back. You can get luggage in the back. It's got the biggest grill of any car ever, maybe. Um, I just think it's really the ultimate daily driver. So it's something that I feel like if you have somebody in your life that's trying to be the cool dad or the hot mom or whatever, I would suggest this is like a top choice in the price range, you know, the sort of 150 grand or something like that. I'm gonna put Rich on speaker, just call me. What's up, man? Dude, uh, are we almost, uh, do you need me to come in or what's going on there? Yeah, well, I'm waiting for you, man. I'm just, you know, this is making the sausage right now. Uh, did you uh, pick out some cars to look at or? Yeah, I think uh, I think we're doing the XB7 right now, the B, the SUV. Dude, SUVs. Yeah, it's a daily driver. No, 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 no SUVs, dude. Remember the ground, ground rules, no SUVs, dude. All right, okay, let's cut. Right. Let's cut. With a big push towards electrification, Porsche has released the Taycan Turbo S, the ultimate daily driver, the ultimate electric car. It's a four-door 918, the way I look at it. It's, a, it's almost like a hypercar. It's got 700 plus horsepower. It doesn't have the sort of visceral engine noise, but you get all the acceleration. It's got ceramic brakes, which you know is a serious deal. These are what's called the Mission E wheels, and depending on which wheel you select with the Taycan, you actually get more efficiency. So some wheels are 30% more, or actually 30 miles more per full charge efficient because of aerodynamic effects. So you can have like an aero wheel, which is kind of cool. These are actually the least efficient, but sort of the most baller. So that's why we end up with those. There's not another car on the market that you can scare the hell out of three passengers with as well as you can with this car. It offers no warning. You instantly accelerate. And if you're in the back seat talking to your compatriot back there and the driver floors it, he can literally send you straight to the car back there. I think this car is really going to appeal to Rich as a doctor because he can put his cute little doctor bag in here. And, you know, it has room for multiple Starbucks cups, which is really a priority for him. I really like the Taycan because it's the first car that really has torque vectoring at the fullest potential. Because it doesn't have a connected drivetrain like another four-wheel drive car, you can get instant torque from the right front wheel, the left front wheel, the right rear, the left rear. It, it all just crosses around like Wi-Fi. It's extremely direct and very digital. It's an interesting experience and we'll see that later. And if you're a hot mom that wants to be a hot rodder, I got something for you. The Audi RS6. V8 turbo power, seats for the kids, and fancy headlights. Look at these things. Oh, 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 Brrr. I just think that's cool. Audi really is the leader in all the infotainment, all the headlight stuff. They had, they've had the best commercials, they have laser lights, uh, I think they're really the industry leader in a lot of the aesthetic parts of, of the car. I think the thing that I love most about the car is that it has the practicality of an SUV. It has the size and the sort of like big penalty box in the back that you can throw the dogs in there or the, you know, the tennis rackets or the shopping or something like that. But then it'll still go around a corner like a car because it's low to the ground. Uh, we'll see some of the dynamics of it later, but this thing has ceramic brakes. It's got red stitching. It's got all this cool stuff and it comes in all black, just like my heart. So, at the end of the day, I think it's between one of these two cars. This is really the thing. Now we just gotta wait on Rich. He's taking his sweet time, so. Hey, I thought, what are you doing? Uh, you wanted the daily driver. Yeah, like a practical car. This is practical, man. You got, I got my Starbucks and I got some Nutella in the glove compartment. 
You ruled out SUVs and you brought a 911? Dude, we what are is that? we are drivers, man. So yeah, so man, this I is I mean, my... at least it's a subtle color, but it like this thing he's got like straight pipes on it. That's right. You gotta enjoy the experience of daily driving, man. That's the whole point. Yeah, but you've never driven either of these before. I have not. Okay. What, so, what, what do we got? What do you got? So listen, yes. That's a practical car. It's got four doors, 700 plus horsepower, Tycon Turbo S. Yeah. Audi RS6, V8 twin turbo, station wagon, no SUVs. No SUVs. Kind of a gray area, right? Yeah. I like that one. So so this, how does this, I mean, how is this in the mix? Well, like you that, know, you, you mean practical, practical sports car. Daily driving does not mean daily boring driving. It it's, means daily fun driving for us drivers, man. So you have to pick a daily car that you're going to have fun with. I have one question, though. These are great cars. Yeah. But how much is that take on turbo? It's like a, it's a 200 grand. It's a Porsche. It's dude. a Triple S. It's the top of the line. You said the best. We, we, the best daily driver. Dude, ground rules, right? So did I not say it had to be in a certain price range below $200,000? Have you seen the price ranges on GT3 Tourings? Yeah, man. His MSRP was like 150 or so. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm going to fact check that. You got, you got the full leather and you got ceramic brakes. This was at least 170. But you yes. know, hey, listen, I'll allow it. Okay, this car though, realistically, this 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 formula, yeah, super fast electric car, yeah, that's that's got to be in the mix. Well, but I, mean, I understand enough, what you're saying; it's too expensive. Not enough luggage space, man. I'll, okay, there's two strikes against this. I'll, <laughs> I'll solve both of those with one stroke of the pen. Okay, I'm I'm excited to see what you're gonna bring up, man. Okay. But it, it better be blue. You know how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Let me go grab this other car. I think it's acceptable. Okay. It's acceptable. It's a 4S. Yes. Right? So it's about 140, uh -huh. right? I got luggage space. Yeah. There you go. And aerodynamic wheels, just like the speed tail. Uh-huh. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. Well, I think this this is this is I this has got to be in the mix. What's the MSRP is what, 140-ish? with all options about 140. Okay. I'll accept it, man. I'll accept it. So yeah, so the V8 twin turbo, like a real big, big dog engine. Yep. You know? uh -huh. um, one of the guys on Instagram actually tuned his to a thousand horsepower already. One thousand horsepower? It's totally necessary for a daily driver, right? One thousand horsepower? Yeah. Okay. Are you just mad because you don't, have, you can't tune your car? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, the the options on this, you know, you can get like you can get carbon fiber stuff on it. This is the black optic package, yeah. so you get black rings. They do have one that's a carbon optic package that you know carbonizes a bunch of this stuff. But if you're putting like all this carbon on the front of the car, it sort of it doesn't really make sense to me, because it's like, you're daily driving. You're driving in the rain, the snow, the bad weather, bad traffic, you know. And what is, this, what is this car weigh, man? So that that, oh, that uh, we don't even ask those kind of questions. Five hundred grams really helps the weight reduction in this car, really. Well, yeah. no, it's all it's strictly aesthetic, right? Because okay. this is enough torque to pull anything, so you're fine. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, it's got multiple seats, right? So how fast is it? Uh, it's like fast. Yeah. I think I'll, you can get actually get like the de-restricted thing and it'll do like a, a buck ninety. So this one has just absolutely monster rotors. Like you can see, I think they're four hundred and ten millimeters. That's huge, um, dude. Yeah, they're they're like uh, the same. This is basically like a Urus, but a station wagon. It's That's the a, same engine, the same brakes, the same transmission. You know, it's it's really just stupid fast. It's like a lowered Urus. That's uh, those brakes are the size of my CRX stock wheels. Well, it's got twenty twos. 22s on a daily driver yeah you know the songs that used to say 20s were the big thing yeah you know, but that was in, that was like 20 years ago now you have to rap about 30s someone's gonna have 30s okay. at some point like you can literally not to do like the, the doug demuro like this is an rs6 but yeah. here you go like you can actually like comfortably like i'm all the way in i'm all the way in he's all the way in yeah i'm all the way in like i could does it close when you're all the way in I don't know, maybe. All right, man, I'm going to take the other car. See you later. This is awkward. <laughs> hey. No, you got to let me out. What about the... Uh... So what's this carbon fiber, dude? I think it was the deal. It's like... It it's looks like good. not normal carbon fiber. It's called carbon twill. Carbon twill. It uh, looks like... It looks like weird. carbon yep. very hard to clean fiber. Yeah, no, it, yes. it definitely looks like uh, carbon wicker. If you, like, spill some Nutella on there... Did your it's head... gonna stuck between the interstices and it will never come out, man. Yeah. That's important to me. That's also interesting. Yes. 
The uh, the seat kind of has the same vibe too. The seat has Nutella vents. It has Nutella vents? Yeah, yeah. We're all... So you'd have to use like a toothpick to poke out the Nutella if you spill it. Uh huh. Okay. Right? Yeah. So the interior is pretty pretty modern looking. I like it. Yeah. There's still some physical buttons. It hasn't gone completely to uh, Tesla style, which is basically look at your screen while you're driving 100 miles per hour and yeah, or something. No, that makes no sense. You can still you have all the multifunction stuff on the steering wheel. The RS mode. Look, it's easy you to know get how to sit in the car, right? Yes. When you get in there. Oh, yeah. It's nice, man. It's nice and roomy. Yep. I feel like I'm gonna have to eat more. What does that mean? Because it's, there's so much space here. You want to fill up the space? Yeah. You know, in the, my, in, the, in the GT3, like you're kind of tight, so you feel there's a reminder not to eat that third burrito. This car has two sunroofs. It has two sunroofs. That has nothing to do with the comment you just made, but I just wanted to point it out. Two sunroofs. Two sunroofs. How does it? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's how long the car is. It needs two sunroofs. All right. You can't just get one big pane of glass back there. It'll torque too much. I really do want to know what the engineers are thinking or what the purpose of this was. When I think they... it's just like you said. They said we need these people to get bigger so they can put up. <laughs> so you put sandwiches in there? Yeah, snacks? put sandwiches in there. OK. Why not? See, cool. and then the back seat's actually practical, too. It's not It's not wallet friendly. The hardest, the worst part about this car is that it's really hard to get one. Oh yeah. So these cars are trading for kind of like the GT3s. They're trading for you know twenty to thirty grand over sticker. Uh -huh. So that's the whole problem is you have to wait in line. It's this whole thing. You can't really just go get one, which makes it pretty impractical for a daily driver. In that sense, you have to kind of know somebody. You have to know somebody to get one. But yeah. Once you, you get one, you can make it a daily driver. Once you get one, you just dunk on everybody because you're like, oh, you guys didn't get one. That's yes. weird. I have a great relationship with my Audi dealer. I am the Audi dealer, so that yeah. kind of helps. We'll be driving this car later, so we will. You yeah. have to hear what it sounds like and see what it sounds like or see what it's like to drive the car on the road. Yeah. All right. So So then I think moving on. The funniest thing about this car is that the way that they refer to the, the foot space for the rear seats, they refer to it as the foot garage. And here's the reason why that's cool. Because it means that you can actually sit lower in the rear of the car so you have more headroom. Because it does have that slope to it, right? It Where you, slope. you know you have that coopy kind of vibe. So I know like the big thing about these wheels is that these are the aero wheels. These yeah. are more efficient. These are, kind of, these are kind of ugly to me, man. I to, I'm sorry, I have to say it. I, I love this car. Okay. It looks beautiful. Okay. The other wheels on the Turbo, the Taycan S looks, Turbo S looks so much better. Yeah, but those wheels are $4,000 more. Yeah. And they get 30 miles less per charge. $204,000, $208,000, you know, if you, if you spend 200K plus, you can... That's not fair, because you ruled that car out because it's too much money. That's true. Okay. So we're saving money, and we're saving fuel. It's got the front trunk for like, you know, like, Crumpled up, uh, I don't know, towels or whatever you want to do. This is a daily driven car. Look at it. It's got the rain things and yeah. This is this yeah. is like a real example, right? This is our right. demo. So we let people drive. This is sort of like the test drive car. That's because we got the the yuppie coffin. The yuppie coffin. Yeah. So the yuppie coffin adds about a, I don't know I don't know what that is 200 liters or whatever they call it. So that adds a pretty good amount of space. So if you're going to make a road trip or something, then you can put stuff up there. And as you can see by the sticker. California clean air rebate, an extra 1500 bucks. Is it, is it, it fits snowboards and stuff like that? Yeah. Or, yeah? Yeah, you can put snowboards up there. Is this, and this is Porsche makes this? Yeah, this is the official Porsche thing, just like their roof racks. Ah. So but and, and then Rich, this is for all your friends because you live in the Bay Area. Yeah. It's a, this car is vegan. The car is vegan. Wait a minute, man. All my friends eat meat. Well, maybe your friends, but you have employees that are vegan, right? That's, that's true. Yeah, they, they have family and friends that are vegan. Okay. So this has the Race Tex vegan interior, uh, you know, so you get the sort of GT3 style uh, steering wheel, but then you get the, the friendlier, you know, I guess more responsible or whatever you want to call it, interior. Yeah, so meaning you use up less cows. What else you got in this car? Okay, so I want to talk to you about comfort. Oh yeah? All right, because the car is dynamic, it is fast, but you have to have the comfort and all the Taycan 4S's and turbos have air ride. They have air ride. Yeah, so okay. the, the, the ride quality on this, because it's a fairly heavy car, Yeah. right? So that keeps the car low to the ground so it doesn't bounce as much. Yeah. Plus it's got the air ride, so it means it, it has a very plush driving experience. Uh -huh. And Four-wheel torque vectoring. It's got a two-speed transmission. It's got two-speed transmission. Yeah, like all the speed. all the Teslas are one-speed. Not an eight-speed. Not an eight-speed, but two, two speeds. speeds. Yeah, and that's different. And so that allows for like really like when you're driving, you can hear it shift. You yeah. can feel it shift. So it has like an extra stage to the acceleration. Uh -huh. It just basically means that you're gonna have super gnarly acceleration at any speed. I see. Can I show you the foot garage? 
Please show me the foot garage, sir. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's a, a two car, a two car foot garage, a two foot garage. So people talk all the time about the range of the car. Yeah. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, uh, because I feel like they're losing about 20 miles of range from our foot garages. You think so? Yeah. Just because, but that's worth it, man. Is my, it? My feet, my feet feel very well, you know, pampered. But the question the is, garage. how often are people riding in the back seat of the of the your your car? This is supposed to be a practical daily driver. Right? No, I know. That's what I'm saying. But the thing is, it does charge faster than anything else. Okay. Because it has the 800 volt system. Yeah. And it has a, uh, they have 350 kilowatt charging solutions. So you can go from like, you know, 10 miles of range to 200 miles of range in yeah. about 15 minutes if wow. you have the right, uh, if you have the right charging infrastructure set up. So if you're driving from LA to San Francisco mm -hmm. in the midpoint, because you always have to stop somewhere with this range, right? Yep. Uh, you can stop. Do your, you know, go uh, to the bathroom. Super fast charge. Get your Mountain Mountain Dew, a Code Red. There you go. Get back in the car. And Hopefully go. not have a Code Brown, but yes, yes exactly. Code Red only. Do you have the charger on board? Yeah, of course. I, I gotta check out the charger. Yeah, let's check it out. The, the, the brick. Let's check it out. Wow. So you plug this into your garage, and then you plug that side into the car, and then you're good to go. This is the charger, which looks pretty fancy. It looks like a Porsche charger. Yeah, so it actually has a Porsche logo on it. Yeah. There you go. Nice. So that's important. And then, that should be the status symbol in the future, man. That's gonna be the status symbol. You know, like, you know, instead of, you know, what flavor flag wearing a clock, you know, yeah. I'm gonna wear my charger, my car charger. So this, the car is apparently so hard to understand that you have to have two separate manuals for the, for the charger. The See, charger has a manual, has well, two manuals. That's the manual for the charger? Yes. Dude, that's some serious reading time there. What's that? That's like a that's like a whole novel, man. Well, but you're gonna have 30 to 50 minutes at a time to what charge your car. What, what do you, you have to read for the read. charger? You just press the charger button on and turn it off, right? Fine. If you don't want to read, <laughs> if you don't want to be educated, that's your thing. Okay. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> it's, not, a very, it's a very crawl. It's a very German thing to I'm read gonna, a whole book. So, yeah, you're not gonna yeah, crawl in there. I'm not gonna crawl in there. I learned my lesson after that last one. Okay, so let's talk about your car now. Okay. Yeah, but that's the top of the engine. So this is always the thing, like, fans. you used to be able to see the 911 engine. Yeah. Now you can't. Right. So now all we get is fans and full point. Oh, that's see, right. At least you know how big the engine is. For so Porsche and 911 fans, looking at this is still somewhat weird that we have to look at it because you just have to flip it up and look at it, right? Even though it's not an engine, it's just a cover, right. two fans. So this is where all the loud noises come from. So we went from a super quiet car so now the loudest, least practical, right? well, not least practical, we have to determine that, right? But in terms of the most ostentatious noises. This is, this car has an Akropovich titanium exhaust with okay. the rear muffler delete. So I would like to say that it gracefully accentuates the resonances that excite your driving pleasure. Huh, okay. That sounds like something that should be said in a movie phone voice. Yes, well, gracefully yeah. accenting your driving pleasure. Whichever way right. works. And on the sill, slide over, don't rub it. Turn, pivot, there we go. Okay. So, you see, that's not fair, man. You're six foot one, so you just like fit in there. Like I'm, I, I have to like, yeah, there you go. Thank you for doing that just to make me feel better. There, does that satisfy your, the, the your OCD? Now, see, this one has, okay, th so the touring is cool because you have all leather. Yeah. Like this is, everything is leather, everything is leather, you get the carbon fiber. So this is like a pretty, this is the, like a loaded spec. This is the, this is loaded spec. Fire extinguisher. Well, you know, you, you, it, it, daily driver does not mean drive slow or drive with caution. Okay, so then the worst, the worst uh, aspect of the interior is definitely the cup holder, right? We yeah. I would say that uh, it's not exactly ideal when you have a full cup of coffee from Starbucks. Um, I do have to carry a fire extinguisher. These in the back. Oh, okay. Got so it. that I can wipe all the coffee that spills <laughs> onto my manual, uh, the, the lever, the gear okay. lever. The gear lever. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's a, that's a little bit of a problem, a lot of a problem because that coffee is often hot. And you do still have this the sort of standard 911 practicality here. Backpacks or yeah. pull out the grocery bag that you got a grocery bag in there? Yes. Okay. There you go. I can ask you a question. I'm not gonna ask why you have a USB 3.0. You know, I just you know, sometimes people's houses are on fire but they need to charge their battery while or they need the to get fire. that data right off, you know, yes, like exactly. some spy so. ship right there. Realistically, five hundred horsepower. Yeah. So less horsepower than the RS six, but more horsepower than the Tycon. 
but way less torque than the Taycan. Yeah. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that how that plays out. It's not, it's not the, the, the size of the power man, it's how you use it. Alright, let's, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Keep this family friendly. <laughs> yes. right. Let's move on. That is impressive, man. I can't, I don't think I can quite, I don't think I can quite get all the way in here. Yeah, no, and there's no, there is actually a release lever if you get stuck in there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, from a, from a luggage standpoint, you know, the, the, we'll call it the coffin test, but you can't really cut up a dead body and fit it in there. Yeah, but you could, you could put stuff in the back somewhere. Yeah, yeah, no, the back seat, you have the back seat for sure. Or the lack of a back seat. Yeah. It's all the soft stuff. So how do you get to that though? Let's just see, you show me the demonstration of that. Don't be so defeated that I'm asking. You know, you bring a 911 to a practical car test, we have to have those conversations. So, yeah, jump this way, I, sideways. I don't really have a lot of room to get stuff back there though, right? No, a lot, man. It's like a whole... Mercers. Yes. Mercers and purses and fanny packs. Yes. Key accessories for the GT3 train. Yes. Okay, well... I well, think you might be a little bit outgunned here. Less less doors, less luggage space, more noise, but also the best noise. The best noise, the best driver involvement. The best chassis. The best chassis. Manual transmission. Yes. Okay. You kind of kind of stack the deck. Okay. So let's get on the road and actually let's get on the We're road. We're actually gonna drive now. What's that? We're actually gonna drive. Yeah, let's go drive. I'm just starting this first time in the RS6. The car is beautiful. I love it. Uh, I'm gonna not do a crazy launch because I'm new to this car. I don't like launching cars I'm new to. The Bang & Olufsen speaker's are already up, but there's no sound, so we'll see how it goes. Holy shit! Things are fast! My god! This a pretty tight left-hander here. The all-wheel drive feels really safe to me. Man, this car is fun. There's some softness to it, right? It feels a little soft. It feels like the edge is taken off. But yet, it still feels somewhat connected to the road, and the responsiveness for a big car like this is pretty good. It's not bad at all. And I, I honestly, it, it's actually enjoyable to drive. Whereas, like, uh, you know, some of these bigger saloons and sedans, they're a little bit less responsive, so to speak. It's utterly ridiculous. This is a pretty badass car. It feels a little numb. It doesn't feel exactly as nice and clean as I, you know, as the GT3. But of course, you're in a, a, a huge car that has like. <laughs> I would go to jail if I had this on a daily basis. The GT3 really is the kind of the gold standard. It's the most important Porsche, most important 911 that Porsche makes for sure. The, the noise is at like 30 miles an hour, kind of horrific. Um, it's it's beautiful if it's a sports car, but for you to have a daily driver, I don't even know if you can hear anything I'm saying right now. It just it might just all come out as ah, you know, just from the engine. It's not lazy enough for, to be a daily daily driver. I think that's what it comes. To. I want to be able to drive this thing with one hand and be really lazy, going around, going around corners, going around parking lots, putting stuff in the trunk. I think the biggest problem that I would have with something like this is it's it's going to be too demanding. Plus, like these seats, you know, while they do fit really well, um, I think I would grow really tired of them after after a little bit of time. Here we go. Oh, fuck.
Whoever says you can't have fun in an electric car hasn't driven this before. This thing is fun. I feel like I'm uh, in some sort of like spaceship. It's a it's a noise that you expect and associate with the future. And honestly, it feels like a Porsche. The way it drives, the way it handles. It's sort of like you're at a ride at Disneyland, but you're controlling it. Honestly, if this is the future of cars, it's pretty exciting, right? Because you still get that feeling of performance. You still get that feeling of, you know, I've got control and I'm driving a car. I'd be, I'd be happy driving this every day. It's tough. I, I came into this thinking, there's no way that I would think an electric car would be fun enough for me to drive every day, but I don't know. This is a pretty damn good car. And with the low center of gravity from the batteries, it just, it just takes you through the curve. It's pretty impressive. I will say it's still sluggish. You can feel the weight and that's kind of part of the issue, right? Is that you can still feel the weight. So, but it's still fun, man. It's still super fun. Well, we have three really well-built German cars yeah, with incredible. three very different packages. I know this car really well. So I just kind of want to like let you have it and just you give me the, Give me the Doc Dog breakdown. You know, I haven't. What's the diagnosis? I haven't doc? driven a Taycan 4S before. Uh, you you took me for a ride in the Turbo S, and that was hilarious, mm -hmm. to say the least. And I was really surprised how much I like this car. You know, like the the way that it handles the steering feel is very Porsche-like. I didn't expect that. The sound that it makes, which is you know, like I, I was saying earlier, I, I was expecting to miss the sound of an engine. I still miss it a little bit. But you but get the sound of a spaceship. You sound like a spaceship. Yeah. And it's cool. It puts that kind of sense of this is totally the future. And then the way it just handled, the way that the, the response was, it's very pusher like. You can tell that the weight's more down lower, um, but you can still tell it's heavy. For sure. I think in, on, on a racetrack or something like that, where you're going to feel like transitions, like yeah. a like a chicane or something like that, then you're really going to notice that this car might need a little bit more tire. Yeah. More Something more like you get on the GT3 or whatever, yeah. more of a Sport Cup 2 or a Sport 4S. I think this tire is is more of an efficiency tire, which is fine because these are the efficiency wheels, right? Ooh. Really? That was yeah. efficiency? Yeah. What's, what's going to be like with real tires? Well, that's what it's, that's to say like there's always a level, right? Yeah. And with the, with the battery powered cars, I think the biggest question is, like you said, it's a substitute it's a substitute, you know, you take away the engine noise, but then you get yeah. spaceship noise. So you're going to take away a certain amount of efficiency from like being able to go to the gas station and just get 10 gallons of gas yeah. with the fast charging situation. Yeah. And you get three years of free electricity with this from right. Porsche, which is pretty cool. I was, I was impressed, dude. This is a really incredible car. I, I was going to think, oh, it's just like a car, but I was very surprised, very right. happy. Well, this is a very different car. Yeah, like all three cars, like you said, are so different. Yes. I mean, we have an electric sedan, we have a flat six 911 GT3, and we have this, you know, ridiculous German Autobahn bruiser of, right. a, of a car. Yeah, and I think like the GT3 out of all three cars is easily the best handling car, yeah. but for a different reason, it's the lightest, right? Yeah. So it has rear steering, it has a really cool uh suspension package that's great in in terms of like the sports car feeling mm -hmm. but i just uh, for me i just worry about the legality of driving a car like this because this is such a hooligan car yes and it has this whole thing of like oh hey just a regular 911 no wings here officer the first time i've heard this car uh and the exhaust outside of my car so now you're like putting yourself in someone else's shoes and now you know how you feel, like, do you know that what, how people think of you when you drive away now? I don't know if I should hate myself or if I should love myself. <laughs> <laughs> so but so you're it, a little bit torn. I'm torn, man. Yeah, I but, get that, I get that. But yeah, you know, the, I, I live with it, so I know I know what it's like and, and I love it. There are compromises to living with this car, no right. doubt. Uh, right. There's the compromise of the cup holders, there's no luggage space, but sometimes I feel like it's worth it for driving that car. Porsche has built the 911 for so many decades now that it's kind of like in a way they figured out how to cheat on all those things. Right. And the cheating aspect of that is to say, oh, well, we're better than this guy. Yeah. So it's like, it's not a, it's not a full on, like a decathlete daily driver, Yeah. but it's not as slow as the fat kid daily driver, right? right. It's like one step ahead to so the bear eats the other guy. Right. So it's like, yeah, it doesn't have, it has more room than, than, than some other cars, right? Yeah. It's got more room than like a Ferrari. Yeah. It's got more practicality than a Ferrari. The trunk's bigger, the dealer network's better. You have like, you know, but you have the noise of like a 458. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like maybe not as gnarly of a noise, 
but still pretty gnarly. Pretty gnarly. So everything, it's it's like it's like nines across the board, yep. which adds up to a very high number. Right. If that makes sense if now, you're categorically looking at it. I personally, this is the best looking car, but I'm biased. What do you? What's your thoughts? This is this is a pretty cool car. I was saying in the video, and maybe you know if you, the RS6. Maybe, the RS6 from the the back looks incredible. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the RS6 like it's subtle though because it look because people see the shape and they assume station wagon, and then they just write it off. Yeah. And then it goes brow and like motorboats past them, and they're like, "What the hell was that?" Yeah. This people see and they think a oh, regular 911, which if you're a car person. You know, like a regular 911 is still a cool car, but then you yeah. see like the center locks, the ceramic brakes, yeah, the little mesh grill on the back that gives away that it's a touring, the front bumper. Yeah. So then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is a touring. Got it. Yeah. This guy wants to drive his car, not just park, pose, and eat. Right. Which you see with a lot of RSs and GT3s in general. Something else to drive a car that looks big and feel the end is big. Yeah. But responds the way it does and accelerates the way it does and looks so nice inside you're right it looks it's a great car audi has done a great job with the design of this car mm -hmm. i think it's one of the best looking cars they've come out with in recent times so this is the thing right this car you know you can take to tahoe yes it's got the range yes the tycon doesn't have the range oh that was the that was the that was the <laughs> dagger in the back right there the range yes. the range the tycon doesn't have the range this one you can take to tahoe go up through the snow and still take it down, take it to the track. That's the amazing thing. Audi's Quattro, Audi really has the best, most comprehensive all wheel drive, all seasons kind of vibe. And that's why this to me is like such a great all around car. So this yeah. is the, uh, we have to we have to come with up with a verdict, man. We have to choose one of the three each. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the RS6. Ooh. Okay. I'm taking the RS6 and only because I like the space that the wagon provides Yeah. and the sort of, I, I like, I mean, I just, this package for me. Has the most all around attraction. Two sunroofs, right. ventilated seats. You know, I was going into this. I literally thought no way anything's going to unseat the GT3 as a daily driver. I just enjoy driving that thing. One of the things I love about the, day, the, the GT3 is that, you know, you, I don't need to listen to music. I just listen to the car. It's just an amazing thing. And you have full control of the car when you're driving. You know, in our daily lives, a lot of things are out of our control at work and whatnot, at home. It's nice to be in control of something for 15 minutes back and forth every yes. day. So that's what I love about that car. But then I started driving these cars and I started looking at them. The RS6 has that presence that I love. It's just, it just, it looks mean. It looks like you don't want to piss it off even more because it's going to come beat you up and your brother and your mother and then, yeah. you know, eat your cereal. Yeah. And then the Taycan is the future, right? It's, it's the future. It's for sure the most futuristic thing. And you can see this is Porsche's first step. Yeah. Really. Like their first step into electric. And the thing is, when you break down the term, the phrase daily driver. Yeah. The driver's side, to me, it's easy. It's the GT3. It's not, not a question, but it's mm -hmm. the daily part comes into it. And the daily is not just living with it in terms of coffee and all this. I'm going to be uh, put on my community good citizen hat and say, the daily is also how does it affect your life, your 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 neighbors and so forth, and yeah. how loud is it? Is it you know in this day and age where we're looking to the environment and all this other stuff, how does it fit into the community of our world? Mm -hmm. And so when I take all those three together, my pick of the three is the Taycan. Really? That's my daily driver. Oh my gosh. That car, when I drove it around the curves, I was just like, it feels like, it feels like a Porsche. It yeah. feels like a GT. It had that response. It's a heavy car. Yeah. But it hides it well. That futuristic noise, the silence of you start up, you could just roll away. I wake up at three or four in the morning. And so I can just roll out of my you know driveway and, yeah. you know, and not wake anybody up. Plus you can dunk on people in Teslas. Correct. Everything's amazing. But this car, it's, it's electric, but you focus on the fact that it's an incredible driver's car. Yeah. And that they leveraged all the tech and the cool things to get it to, to work. And so to me, that's a car I would love to drive every day. It still has the thrill of driving, that Porsche feel. Yeah. Um, but it has the electric future. So to me, that's it. All right. All right. Well, so split decision, basically. Split decision. So, okay, ranking them, are you putting Taycan RS6 GT3? I know it, your GT3 is sitting right here, so I'm not trying to embarrass it. But for, for me, it's RS6 Taycan GT3. Because I've got the kids and that stuff, I, the, the RS6 for me with the extra space yeah. is the only reason why it's going past the Taycan, yeah. realistically. Because for dollar for dollar, I think the Taycan is 
more it's more elegant right it's got yeah. more of that i mean this is more like more like the raptor yeah. you know what i'm saying like it's 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 ostentatious and kind of like what's up bro and it's not very subtle um so it's like you know it's cool but i think like you said the tycon's the future yeah the tycon's coming fast and then fast. cars like the tycon are going to unseat a lot of these cars and it's going to be okay yeah i would say that my three so it's going to be the tycon mm -hmm. the gt3 and the rsx and it's not separated by much okay. and the only thing is that you know driving this was really fun but when i hit the curves i just you know just that that feel of taking the car and just turning it and you gave that direct response I, I i like that and so that's the only reason that barely ekes out the r6 the r6 is up there and i would this is really hard all three of these cars are incredible yeah and it's like you know trying to pick your favorite child it's so not, we get to have both we do. you gotta have both you have to have both you, you have to have good job get more cars okay <laughs> that's the key it's a true happiness in the car world because if you try to eliminate things down to one Right, it's hard. Thanks, everybody. You know, we the first video we did was track cars, track cars, and this video was daily driver cars. So we're mixing it up. We're, there's going to be other videos coming forth soon. We'll, we'll send up some ideas. We're excited to do more videos and excited to get back on this throttle dog train. And argue with us in the comments. Please. I dare you. Please argue with us. We like arguing. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks.